How you doing everybody? This is Jim Buck with Black Shoes Campers of Southern California out of the city of industry. And today I'm gonna to give you a walkthrough tour of our Classic 12. So let's get into this, let's get going. So as always, where I like to start is the front. And so on the front side of our Classic 12, it's a little bit different. And so it's actually an open-ended front. It's not concealed, it's not closed. And so it still has our angulation right here. So it's gonna act as a rock guard. So we have the angles right here that come back. So if you're kicking up mud, dirt, rocks, especially the rocks, it's coming up, it's deflecting off, deflecting away. So that way it's not coming up and dam causing more damage to your diamond plate or causing damage up here into your aluminum composite. But this is an open unit. <clears throat> and so we have our propane, we have two propane tanks up here. We have our plumbing for our propane. And then we also have two brackets, one on each side for that can accommodate a five gallon jerry can. Now you can use it for either gas, um, diesel, whichever you want to use, or you could even set, uh, set uh, water tanks in here. So that way you have spare water to go along with your unit. Now also on the front, we also have our mechanical handbrake. As always, our mechanical handbrake. And so that's gonna allow you to stop your unit without the use of uh, chocks all the time. So that way you can disconnect. But when you are parked, you should be utilizing a chalk so that way that limits movement of your vehicle. As well as we also hear, see here on the front, we have our two plugs. We have our seven pin. That's gonna be plugged in to control our signals, the running lights and everything else to go with the unit. And then we have our 50 amp Anderson plug that's here on the front as well. Now you can use that if you have a spare solar panel, you can uh, hook into the solar panel to that and that goes to charge the batteries. Um, or if you have modification done to your vehicle to inquire or have a Anderson plug, you could do that as well. Also here on the very front, we have our articulating hitch. Now we do have a video on our library. Please be sure to check into our library and see the articulating hitch for more information. But because of the articulation hitch, you're gonna have your rotation, your 360 degree rotation here. You have 70 degrees worth of rise here. And then the connection is gonna allow you your right left turns. So you have your full articulation going on with this unit. But again, make sure you check out our video in our library, official Black Series Camper US, so you can see all of the different uh, videos that are within our library. Now, another thing we have is our heavy duty chains. We have our heavy duty chains here on the front of the unit. So make sure that when you have them hooked up, you are doing them crisscross. Now I'll show you again real quick what I mean by crisscross. Many people I've seen going down the road will actually hook these chains up in a straight line. And so when you're coming off, you're actually coming off like this. Now nothing's gonna catch and hold very well. The idea, the concept is you crisscross them. That way if it's something lets loose, it catches. So that's why you wanna make sure that when you're hooking up, you hook them up crisscross. Now, we also have here on the front is our jockey wheel. We have our jockey wheel, and you can see we have it in our lowered, our lowered position. Um, you don't wanna have it in a higher position, so that way you can roll it around. If you're gonna roll it around, leave it in the, ro the lowered position. There is more information, again, in our library on our jockey wheel. So be sure to check in to see the information on the jockey wheel. There's a lot of good information there in our library. So make sure you check that out. So here at the front corner, as we come around from the front, we have our first compartment. It's got a vent fan on here. And part of the role of that vent fan is to help pull out some of the heat that might be coming off of our refrigerator. So we have a Black Series refrigerator in here. It's a nice little cooler. You can fit quite a few things in here. You can fit some meats in here, maybe some hamburgers, sodas, whatever you'd like to sit in here. But this is gonna be coming with the Black Series C12. It's our very own refrigerator. We're excited about it. This is a really nice refrigerator. Now the nice part is, it is a 12 volt refrigerator. Here's the plug for it. And the nice part is, I'm gonna push this in, so that way you can see, there is a 12 volt plug right here. This is a marine grade. 12 volt plug here in this compartment. Now the nice part is if you look in here, you can see how deep this compartment is. There is an, a compartment the exact same size 
all the same amenities on the other side of this unit. Now it doesn't come with a refrigerator in it on that side too, but if you want to swap this from this side to the other side, you have the capability to do that. And that's one of the nice features about this front compartment. Our other compartment is our pass-through storage. We have our nice little pass-through storage here. Open this up here and you can see all the way through. There's actually some lights in here. There's a light up in here right against this front compartment here. And you can see one on the other side so that we can light up the compartment, see what's in there, see what you're digging for. And there's some items in here. Um, there's a pole here for the awning. Um, you know, there's some other items that are in here. Um, we'll get into in just a bit. Let me push this down. So as we go up a little bit higher, we see there's a, a uh, antenna. This is the antenna for our radio that's inside. So there's a radio inside. We have our awning. And if you can see real quickly, you can see this is a pop top unit. And so this is actually in the closed configuration right now. And so one of the main questions that we will get is how tall is this going down the road? Now going down the road, you're looking at eight foot two inches. So when we raise it up, we're gonna get about another one foot seven out of it, comes up to about nine foot nine inches. But again, this is the closed configuration. We'll get into opening it in just a little bit. So as we travel along, we move along, we have our door, our standard door um, with our triple lock system on it. And so as you open it up, there's the three points of contact that you'll lock at. Um, when you move the lever this way, you can see it goes in. Separation of the screen. Okay, the screen is separate configuration. You have the grid, you have the uh, grid that goes all the way down for the screen. And again, the lock is part of the screen. The lock is not part of the door. So as you look at the top up here, when it's closed, this is very loose. You can see this movement down at the bottom. You can see, oh, there's actually not much movement at the bottom. But when I move the lever, which sets the third pin right here, and actually I'll do it again really quick. So to see it go away, there's the pin, there's the pin away. So here, there's our lock. So now there's little to no movement from the pin, the screen right here, because it is secured. Okay. So I'm going to show you one more time real quick. You're gonna lift up this lever and that separates it, okay? Now, for closing and locking the door, now I don't have the key right here with me, but what you're gonna do, if you're gonna go away, you're gonna close the door, you're gonna push the lever that way. So when you're pushing the lever that way, you're setting the pins. When you put the key in, you're gonna give it a quarter turn to the right and you'll feel the lock engage. To unlock your door, you're gonna give it a quarter turn to the left and you will feel it disengage and then you would just open up your door, okay? As we're moving along this way, we have our exterior speaker. It is a marine grade exterior speaker, as well as our floodlight. Um, it's not a high density floodlight, it is just a floodlight, so you can see, have some uh, outdoor lighting for everything you're doing. You have the lock, this is the lock to hold your door open. There is a bar, I'm gonna grab this real quick. There's a bar, the bar lifts up, and so when you close it over, you're just gonna hook it right over like that, if you can see that there, okay? And so just be careful to undo that before you close your door. We have an exterior window. The size of the window also doubles as an emergency escape window um, with its latches. Now this does have a range of movement, and so you can see how it comes up and goes down. Uh, you know, it can raise up to this high, but there's different areas where you're gonna lock it in place. So there's one of the lowest settings right there. You have your next setting up, and then you have, I believe, one more setting. That's gonna be your most open right here. Um, now you also have, you can kind of see inside here, with your windows, you're gonna have your privacy screen. This is a privacy screen. And this goes all the way down. And then you also have your bug screen. If you are in an area where you're not being bothered by bugs, leave the window completely open. You greatly increase the amount of airflow through your unit and bringing in fresh air. Otherwise, if bugs are bugging you, you can attach these two together, attach the privacy screen and the bug screen, and then you can slide them up and down as needed. And there's also a couple of releases that are right here so you can release how it connects, okay? I'm gonna go ahead, you know, I'll close this up. As we get down here to the very back, we come into our kitchen. Now the Classic 12 does not have an interior kitchen. It only has the exterior kitchen. Now I want to point out very quickly that if you look upwards to the awning, the awning will cover the kitchen to the edge of the unit. Okay, so you will have some protection from the elements, a little bit of protection. So as we bring out our kitchen, 
Again, we have our very nice, very large prep table. So I'm gonna lower this down. So we have our prep table. There's another little prep table over here on our side that slides out as well. And then we have our stove. And so when you open up our stove, the stove has, it has wind guards. So these are set out to the side as wind guards, okay? It's a two, this one is a two burner stove, has a click start right here. So you have your, your controls here for your propane. Now, in order to get propane, in order to get the gas to the stove, you do need to plug in. So I'm gonna open up the front compartment door here. You see the black gas hose. So this is the propane hose. There's an opening at the bottom of the kitchen. It comes out and it's gonna plug underneath here. So you can see this brass one, this one is for your gas line. And to the right of it, that's for your water line. So the water line will also connect, it's a quick connect, to the front of the kitchen. So here I have, you can see I have the water line. So this would attach here. Now again, make note that when you're hooking in, you wanna hook into the dry side first, hook into your kitchen. Otherwise, if you plug into the unit side, you're gonna start shooting water all over the place and you don't have a whole lot of water to, to lose. So that's why you wanna make sure you plug into the dry side first, then plug into the unit. Same thing with disconnecting. Disconnect from the wet side first, so that way you have the dry side left over. So here at the back side of our Classy 12, we have this massive door. And so it's very nice, it's got three little pins right here. You can push these, unlock them. And so these do lock. And I, I will show you later on how this all works, but this is gonna open up and here your door, here's your side walls and the whole bed will fold out. Um, but again, I'll get back to this in a minute. I got some other stuff I'm gonna talk to. And before I do that, I also need to make sure that I undo my pins, which are keeping the roof locked down. So don't get so excited. You wanna open your bed up that you forget you need to unlock your pins first, okay? So as we come down a little bit, we look, we obviously have our light system. We have our stop lights, our turn lights, and our ever popular reverse signal. Like I said, it's really nice in the evening hours to have these lights back here so you can kind of see where you're going. So as we go down here, we have our recovery hooks. They have about a 9,000 pound rating. And the idea is we don't want you to get stuck. That's not the idea. But if you do get stuck, you have the recovery hooks. So that way you can hook into that. That's what they're designed for. That way you're not hooking into uh, maybe the leg or some other area you should not be hooking into. And if you look underneath, that's where your spare tire is. The Classic 12 only has one spare tire and it's mounted underneath. And as long as we're under here, let's take a look. And we, as, as always on all of our Black Series units, we have our independent suspension, independent swing arms, dual shocks per, uh, per arm, heavy duty coil springs, limiting chain. This is what's gonna allow us to allow you to get into your off-road environments. This is what allows Black Series to help you reimagine your destination. So as we can take a look underneath here, you can see we have three tanks underneath this unit. Now we have a black 26 gallon capacity tank to hold your solid waste matter. And then the gray tank is actually a 16 gallon tank, which leaves us with a 26 gallon fresh water tank. So as you come around the other side of our Classic 12, right here off the back, we have our hot water heater. It's a six gallon hot water heater. As we come forward a little bit, we have an exterior shower. Now here's one of the nice things. With our exterior shower, you see there's a track up high. You see this track mounted up here. And so the, actually the Classic 12 comes with an exterior shower, like an actual enclosure, which is really nice. So what it does is it slides into this track and you feed it out and it has two tent poles to help hold it out with guidelines. And there's openings, there's an opening for the light. You see a floodlight right here. There's an opening that covers the shower head. So that way you can stand here in the light with your shower completely enclosed in your own personal outdoor shower. One of the really nice features of the Classic 12. Now, as we come forward, we have our water intakes. Now, one of the water intakes is our general water intake. And again, that's gonna fill our 16 gallon tank. And then we have our block water tank. So this is gonna be the flush 
for our black water tank. So as you are dumping the sewage, your, your raw sewage out of your black tank, you'll put a hose in here, a black water hose, not your drinking water hose, a black water hose into here. So that way you can fill, backfill the tank and you have more fresh water to flush out your black tank. So just next to our floodlight here, we have our 30 amp plug. So there is a 30 amp plug service to help run, like for instance, the air conditioning up on the roof. We have an air conditioner up on the roof on this unit. And then over here, we have our vent. This is a vent for our heater, our space heater, our propane heater. This is a 16,000 BTU heater inside this very small unit. So you're gonna be more than warm enough when it comes to running that unit in the winter time. So we already kind of covered as we come up here, the outside compartment, this is the other side of the passenger compartment, goes to the other side. And I also mentioned that we also had the exact same style of compartment on this side as well. So again, nice large drawer. It has the pull-out drawer that's gonna come out. You got your 12 volt marine grade plug right here, um, as well as a few other items, you know, sewer pipes and uh, you know, your support leg for your kitchen um, and some other items here in the front. So let's go around, I'm gonna talk about the back, we're gonna open up the back and we're gonna get into this thing. So in order to raise up our roof, we're gonna to have to pull the pins. Now there are four pins, you see two here on the front and then there's two on the rear as well. So here I am at the back of the unit and again, before I start opening up the, the lid and, and showing you how everything opens up, we gotta make sure that we undo all of the clips. There are four clips, there's two here on the rear, two on the front, now, what I like to do is I'll pull the pin, you unflip it like this, unlatch it. Now, unfortunately, if you leave it down like this, when you raise up the lid, sometimes this may get caught. So what I like to do is I like to flip this up and I like to take my pin and run it back through the hole and then flip it over. See, so now it's locked in place. This definitely isn't gonna flip down and get caught up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the floor and then we'll meet up back inside. So here I am inside of the C12. Now, as you can see, I'm hitting my head against the roof and that's because the roof is not raised yet. I, wanna, uh, I wanted to show you, because internally, once we raise the roof, this is actually one of our taller units. We actually have six foot five inches worth of head clearance once this is open. Now, I'll stand up here real quick, just so you can kind of get an idea. I'm six one, I still got a few inches to go. I'm still kind of standing here in the step area. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and raise the roof on this unit, <laughs> raising the roof. So what we're doing is we have this handle right here. And so what I'm gonna do is using the assistance of this, I'm gonna push up and push this into the open position. So now we have this in the open position in the front. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the back and we're gonna open the back up. So now here I'm at the back of it. So I have a bar right here. And so I'm just gonna very gently push up. Now again, there are shocks and springs outside that help to support the roof and actually make it pretty darn easy to raise up. So I'm gonna stand up here. I'm gonna show you just how much room I have. Again, I'm 6'1". This unit comes in at 6'5". So you can see I have quite a bit of headspace in this unit. And even if I step forward to the air conditioner area, I got headroom at the air conditioner area, so I'm not even hitting my head there. So let's take a look around and we'll look at some of these other features that we have going on inside the C12. So now that I have the roof popped up, what I'm gonna do, this is our bunk. So this is the bunk bed that's up here. I'm gonna push this up out of the way, just so you can kind of see it. So make sure when you are stowing the roof, this does have to be down. And But if you look here in the back of the unit, you can see how the lid is closed up. And if you look very closely, you can even see how the two walls, uh, the side walls are actually closed in, how it all encloses in the area. We've got a nice little fan over there off in the corner with a reading light and a fan over in the other corner. So we got two fans, one in each corner with reading lights. And as you come up a little bit, you'll notice a couple different things. One, there's obviously zippered windows, like always, we have the zippered windows on here, but there's also a new material. It's a polyvinyl material to help with uh, resisting um, any kind of mold or mildew. Um, it, 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 you still need to make sure you are maintaining your materials, but it does make for a really nice 
um, uh, tent material. It helps to hold in a lot of the, the, the heat as well as the cold when in the different months. But again, having these screens open really makes for a great airflow through the unit, especially on a hot California sunny day. Now, just really quick, I mentioned when I was raising up the roof, I mentioned the shocks and the springs. And so if you look right here, you can see one of the shocks um, that helps to hold that lid up and keep it moving around. So now that I showed you the inside of what this back compartment looks like, I'm gonna show you how it opens up and what it looks like. So again, like I mentioned earlier, we have three latches. You click those open. Again, these are lockable latches. And so what you do is you take this lid and this makes your roof. So you're gonna be holding your roof up and then you have two pins right here on the doors. And so I showed you these doors inside as well. So this one will slide out and go all the way out to the corner and then you can lower the roof on it so that way it stays in place. And then you have another pin, you bring this one out and you push that in the corner. So now you have your two walls constructed and your roof, okay? So now we have the inner compartment which is gonna be the bed. And so there's a, a spring lock here. You pull that out and give it a twist so that way it will hold out and away. Oops, there we go. There's a little latch on here. So you pull this out. Now you can see this moves. So as we come outwards, okay, make sure your walls are pushed out. Make sure your pins are pulled out as well. You don't want the pins to get caught. This will lower down and will come to rest on the bottom of your slide out doors. So now you have this massive open space. So I'm gonna show you here, you can see how everything is, how this large area is. Now there is two sleeping pads, though the bottom sleeping pad is gonna stay in its position where it is, and that upper sleeping pad is gonna fill in the gap in here once we raise this door up. Now to get the door up, obviously it makes it a little bit easier if you have two people to do. It can be done with one person. I will usually grab here and get my leverage and pull it all the way up into here, okay? Now, once you get it up into the upper position, you come over here, you kind of give this handle a little tug too, make sure it's pulled out all the way. And then there's a pin that's gonna slide through. If you look right here, there's a pin that's gonna lock this in place. There's gonna be one on each side. So now once we have this open, we have this beautifully large window right here that's also gonna help open up, bring air into your unit. It's got a screen on it. It's got a dual pane window, just like always, that plexi dual pane window to help keep down condensation within our unit. You have your roof with an overhang, so that way it's not rolling right down off of it. You have a little bit of gap of spacing here. But again, it's a really nice function and feature because you're adding about three extra feet to this unit. The length of this unit from the back, from where I showed you, from here to the front is 16 feet long. So when you throw this on here, it takes your unit up to about 19 feet long. And that's going from the tip of the poly block to the rear of the unit. So again, you're gaining about three feet. Now because of this as well, you're also getting a, a king size bed. Um, you know, instead of the standard queen, you end up on under, with everything. Um, but again, when it's all folded up, you still have about a twin size bed. So if you do decide while you're rolling down the road, you still have an area where you can lay down and have at least about a twin size bed you can lay down on and uh, relax a little bit and get a little rest so that way you're not driving while you're tired. So now that I have the rear portion open, we're gonna push the bed into place. Now very quickly before I do that, I wanna make sure I mention, make sure that you have all of your stabilizer legs down, especially the rear ones, because now you're extended past where your wheelbase is. So if you don't have your stabilizer legs down, there is that possibility you could tilt the unit, and we don't wanna be doing that. So again, make sure you have your stabilizer legs down and in contact with the ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this mattress pad now, and I'm gonna shove this back here. Now once I have the mattress pad in place. Again, like I said, it makes about a king size bed for you. Now what I'm going to do too is I mentioned there's the locking pin back here. So I'm going to crawl around back in here, get back in here. And so you very easily lift this up and slide this out and it will lock in place. And that's going to keep your unit locked in. So that way you can't close it down until you're ready to close it down. 
So one of the features, or two of the features, I should say, that I pointed out earlier was our little 12 volt fan, which is plugged in, and it works really good right now. And then we have our reading light. So our reading light is a touch light. So you touch the button once, and it turns on this little blue ambient light. But you'll notice the reading light itself is not on yet. So when you touch it again, the reading light comes on. When you touch and hold, then the reading light will get, in this case, it's getting brighter because I had already dimmed it. And when you, I let go, now I'm going to touch and hold again. And now you can see the reading light is getting dimmer. So again, this not, is not just an on and off switch. It's also a dimmer switch and a brighter switch. So I'm going to go ahead and touch it one more time and we turn it off. But I'm telling you though, these fans, two of them, they really greatly increase the airflow through this unit, as well as having all of our windows open. So again, having these windows really increases just the enjoyability of being in the unit. So I've gone ahead and I've lifted up the mattress and I've pushed it back a little bit to expose some of the compartments here. Now, the back part of this area is actually gonna be where the slide out kitchen is because you may not realize it, but this is where the back of the unit is. So the slide out kitchen is underneath the bed. Now the compartment, there's a compartment up here and that's where the hot water heater is. The front compartment right here, this is where you find all of your water pumps. So your water pumps, your hoses, the back side of your exterior shower. And so that's where in your mixing valve, that's where all this stuff is. And then in this compartment here, this is storage. So you have some storage right here, okay? And then as we get to this first one, now if you'll notice, you also will see there's a couple plugs here before I get in the compartment because this is where it's hooked into. It's a dual USB port. And then the lower one is actually a 12 volt plug. So you have a 12 volt plug and a dual USB port. And they're part of this compartment because this is where your batteries are. And so the C12s are now, the newer unit models coming out, are now going to be sporting two AGM batteries. So that's 100 amp hours a piece, so that's 200 amp hours of power here within this unit. Now, I'm going to shift this and I'm going to shift over here because the compartment where I am is actually going to be where, and I'll set this here, is going to be where our inverter is. So as we raise this up, so you can see there's a battery charger underneath here. This is a 20 amp trickle battery charger. We have our charge controller. We have a 1000 watt inverter. And then you can also see here's our brake controller for our breakaway. Um, we have our speaker mounted on the front. So this is the access for the speaker. But there's also all of these fuses right here um, for the control panel, towing vehicle, for the inverter for the solar control battery charger. And then this is the battery cutoff. So this would completely cut off all power to the batteries. Now the battery is always being, or excuse me, batteries are always being charged by the solar panel that's up on the roof. There is one 150 watt solar panel on the roof, on the rear of the unit. So about right where I am. And so that 150 watt solar panel is constantly charging the two batteries. Now again, you can add an additional solar panel, a portable solar panel, if you purchase one, to the front, it would hook into the Anderson plug up on the front. But this is gonna be your, your basically your control center for all your electronics. Now what you can't see, because the angle is actually the backside of the radio. And so if you actually look around to the front side of the compartment by the door, you will see where the radio is. And so this would be the control area, or this would be the, the access area to your radio here on the back. So a few of the features that we have within the Classic 12, we look over here on the wall by the entry door, we have again our marine grade plug. And so here's another dual USB port plug, as well as a 12 volt plug right here. We have this nice light, and so these lights actually adjust and move. You can raise it up, raise it down. This helps to light up the area. And then from here, we have our TV. This does not have a DVD player. This is just a straight TV, but it does have HDMI plugs to it, which is a very nice feature. And then when you come down over here across the way, we have a lot of nice storage compartments. Now we got all of our wiring and stuff in here, but we have a couple really nice storage compartments. And then we come up and we have our heater. So this is our 16,000 BTU heater. 
Uh, it's got an adjustable grate to it, so you can aim the heat downwards while we rises up. And so from our heater, if we go up, we look up, and we have our air conditioner. And so you see the very simple controls on the front, um, and it's got vents um, that will open up on the side, so that way you can angle out your air in whichever direction you would like it to go. So right here, now here's our, our heater right here. Now the controller for the heater is right here on the side. So you have your, your simple on and off switch here. You have your heat control right here, hotter or colder. And then over here, we also have a breaker panel. So we do have breakers over on our main control panel, but when you're plugged into a 30 amp system, we have different breakers and a different panel to go with our 30 amp system. So your bathroom area here in this front corner here, this is a wet bath. Now there's actually a pin that locks here on the top. So that way you can kind of keep it locked right here. So you just simply push that and you can open it up. There's a magnet along the front here that helps to hold this door closed as you're going along. But there's also here, I'm gonna close this up and show you a privacy screen. So that way if you're in there taking a shower, at least you can close, zip this up and you have some privacy to it. Now, once you open it up, you also look you can see that you have a window in there, as well as a vent fan with lights around it. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on real quick here for you. Vent fan and the lights. So you can see the vent fan and your lights, as well as a regular light in here. So I'm gonna turn these back off. And so in the shower area with your wet bath, you have your toilet, your flush toilet, um, and then you have a very nice shower head assembly um, with a uh, you, you have a soap dish holder to it. You can adjust the head. It slides up and down on the pole. Um, and then it's going to be draining down into your 26 gallon gray tank. And again, this is a single piece of fiberglass. You can see there's no seams, no gaps. It's a single fiberglass piece that makes up the entire shower area. Now here in the front of the unit, we have several different features that, that are, are noteworthy that I'd like to point out. One, you notice there's no kitchen here. Like I said, the only kitchen you have is your slide out kitchen that's outside. Now, one of the, full, the, the features that we now have on the unit is actually up here on our ceiling, and that's gonna be our touch light. So there's actually a little emblem right in the center of it, and to let you know, that's where you touch it. And so that turns it on. So you have this cool little touch light right here at the entrance area. You have your wash basin. So once uh, maybe you use your restroom, you have an area to wash your hands. You open up this cabinet, we have a nice storage, nice deep storage cabinet here. There's a lot of storage here in the front area. Um, then also underneath, we have storage cabinets as well as the plumbing. You can see the plumbing down here. But again, really nice, really deep cabinets for storage. And another cabinet <laughs> you have and I'm gonna step out over here a little bit. We have a speaker right here. And so there's another cabinet right here behind me. And this actually goes back way deep in here. Um, so again, nice deep cabinetry. Now, as we come up a little bit, we have a couple of, of things. So here we have a GFI plug. Now this GFI plug is only gonna function when you are plugged into a 30 amp service. If you do need to plug into something, you can actually plug into your inverter. The inverter I showed you earlier underneath this bench, has got plugs to it so you can plug into it with your inverter there. And we also have two more plugs here. So we have two more uh, double USB plug and another uh, 12 volt plug. We have our readouts, our fresh water tank, remember 16 gallon fresh water tank, our gray water tank, it's a 26 gallon tank, our black water tank, again, 26 gallon tank. And then we have our switches, our main switch. So if I turn this off, I turn off all of the power here in our unit, turn that back on. Our interior lamps, our refrigerator. So remember, like I said, the plug that's outside in the compartments, this is our plug for our refrigerator. Our 12 volt plug, so all of our 12 volt plugs, that's our switch for this. Our water pump, our exterior lamps, and our outside speakers. So yes, the speakers have a plug too. And then we have our breaker switches. Um, again, we use breakers, we don't use fuses. And then we have our LED readout that tells us about how much power is coming in from the solar panel, how much power we're using with the fans and lights and everything going on. And then we have our switch, our electrical switch for our water heater, um, and then our propane switch to run our water heater. Um, so again, these are all of the things that are gonna go into the unit that make this a very nice, very functional, with a lot of storage unit um, without getting too terribly large. 
So there you go, everybody, the Black Series Classic 12. I hope that we were able to answer all of your questions. If you still have questions, be sure to hit us up at info at blackseriescamper.com. Also be sure to check all of our social media and keep up to date through our Instagram page and our Facebook page. And you can also check out our YouTube channel with all of our educational videos at official Black Series Camper US. Again, this is Jim Buck with Black Series Campers in Southern California out of the city of industry with the Classic 12 saying, take care everybody, we'll see you out there. How you doing everybody? This is Jim Buck with Black Series Campers of Southern California out of the city of industry. And we hope that you enjoyed the last video of a series that we just got finished watching. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to ask to make sure that you please like and subscribe to our channel so that way you can see all of the videos that are coming up in our series. So make sure that you get out there, you smash that bell up in that corner up there and again, this is Jim Buck with Black Series Camper. So we hope you enjoyed that video. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.